first things first, I want to start with a question. When do you guys think that table tennis was originally invented? When, when, was, when was inception? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago? That's what I thought as well. However, through my research and the article History of Table Tennis, I found out that it's actually over 150 years old, originally being invented sometime in the mid-19th uh, mid century, gaining popularity through the late 19th century into the early 20th century. The original tables consisted of a cleared-off dinner table with books in the center in order to mimic an actual full-size outdoor tennis court. The paddles would be old cigar case lids, the balls would be rubber, string, or even rounded champagne corks. And I found this very interesting. Not only because the sheer technology like, needed to like, play ping pong, but the fact that after I've been playing ping pong for so long, I never thought to look up the history behind it. Uh, as I said, I've been playing tennis, uh, ping pong for a while. And uh, from this, I've gained a lot of experience. I've learned a lot. I know the difference between terrible ping pong swings and good ping pong swings. And I hope from this speech, you guys will, if you haven't played, be intrigued enough to maybe go out there and hit a little bit. And if you have, maybe you learn something new. All right. Uh, my main points will be the grip, swing, and addition of spin. Uh, all of my information either comes from my own personal experience or the articles by Ben Larcombe or Greg Letts. Uh, and uh, first things first, we have grip. So this is the shake hand grip. The shake hand grip is by far and away the most common grip. It's used by at least 80% of uh, pro ping pong players. I don't want to say all, but pretty much all recreational players. And most people are not even aware of any other ways to actually handle a ping pong paddle. This consists of placing the index finger on the back hand side's rubber, the, four, uh, the thumb on the forehand side on the inside, three fingers wrapped around the handle, the hand of course placed as close to the top of the paddle as possible, and the object of this is to create a V with your hand, the thumb, in line with the side of the paddle. So here we go. That would be the correct grip, as you can see the V. These are back end horn grips that are too exaggerated in one way or another, and if you do that, you sacrifice your ability to either have effective forehands or backhands, which is mostly the uh, shake hand grip's greatest attribute, having a great forehand and backhand. Second thing here, we have the rear side of the pen hold grip swing, or uh, grip. This one is far less common and only can be used by some Japanese and Korean pro ping pong players. It has its origins much earlier. It actually doesn't even use this paddle. You can't tell from this picture, but there's no rubber on the back and it's about half as thick as this one for lightness. This one has a very powerful forehand and it sacrifices almost the entirety of its backhand for that. Next thing, now that we have the grips down, there's four main swings. There's the drive, the push, the block, and the smash. The drive is by far and away the most common and used throughout the entire game, and it consists of a low to high swing with, of course, the shake hold grip, like this. You, have, you want to make a 90 degree angle between the paddle and your shoulder, shift your weight towards your target, and swing through the ball. Now we have the push. The push is absolutely essential and it's more of a chopping motion, a high to low. It's supposed to change the pace of the game. Naturally adds a little bit of backswing to the ball. You go across, mostly it's a backhand, sometimes you go forehand. Then there's the block. And although this may seem to be the easiest, it is by far and away the most challenging and is entirely based off of practice. There's no real way to learn how to do it without playing a lot. And this one, you're, the, the object is to hit the ball immediately after it bounces and change your racket uh, or the paddle face angle just by eyeballing it. Then there's a smash, which is basically a glorified drive, just exaggerated, everything is exaggerated. You wanna bring your swing up higher, you wanna swing through faster, and this one is usually only off of a high bounce ball. Finally, now that you have your swing and the grip, you wanna add spin. Most pro uh, ping pong players play between six to eight feet away from the uh, back of the ping pong table. Most recreational players usually play right up against it. The fact is they have spin. So the spin is mostly the exaggeration of a low to high, an exaggeration of a high to low, 
or a change in the racket angle. For the drive, you're going to want to have a very loopy shot. You're going to want to come down, let the ball drop below the table itself, come up and swing across, almost like a full tennis swing, so it's getting a little farther away from ping, uh, from a ping pong swing. The push, obviously you're going to come back across, hit as high as possible, this is usually in defense of a smash, high to low, down across the table, change up the pace of the game. The block is much less used in pros, it's usually only a, like a very hard defensive, and you just come across and just try to get it across, get it across, and hope the opponent messes up. The smash again, just an exaggerated version of the drive, and this one is truly a full tennis swing. So in conclusion, I hope that any of you guys that haven't played ping pong will be intrigued enough just to go out there and hit. It's a great way to meet some people. And uh, if you have played, I really hope you did learn something. Thank you.